Charlotte Internet. I'm Selke, and today I'm going to be talking about the background stories or inspired stories or stories, tales that have inspired Disney films, specifically Disney princess films. Because, as you may or may not know, one of my New Year's resolutions was to go ahead and finish reading three books by the end of the year. That might sound like it's not that much, but I don't read fast. I don't read quickly and I get very over thing. I get over things very quickly. So while I was going through this book here of fairy tales, Told by told by the brothers Grimm. Or at least collected by the brothers Grimm. I ended up going past three specific three particular stories that I'm gonna need that book again. That caught my eye. I'm going over to the index of the book so I can read it properly. Number one, Cinderella. Number two, Briar Rose. And then right after it, number three, Snow White. There's also the shoes that, the shoes that were danced to pieces. Yeah, the shoes that were danced to pieces. But I think that deserves a different look into it. Maybe with someone that would also enjoy talking about it as well. So at least two of those would have perked your ears up and reminded you of Disney movies, Cinderella, Snow White, and the Seven Dwarfs, or if you remember it and have actually watched it, Snow White and the Huntsman. I remember watching it. I don't remember what happened in the movie. So today I'm going to be talking about the similarities and differences between the Brothers Grimm, the Brothers Grimm's tale or story on Snow White and Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. No, we're not acknowledging Snow White and the Huntsman because one, again, I didn't want to watch the movie. I know I ended up watching it, but I don't remember anything that happened in the movie. Plus, I don't want to watch it again. And I already have to go. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs was already an hour and a half. And then I had to also stop at periodic moments to go ahead and write down notes. It's really bright outside if you couldn't tell. So depending on how long Snow White and the Huntsman is, I'm, I'm, I would say maybe about two hours, two and a half hours. And then also having to stop just to go ahead and write down, ooh, in the movie, in this movie, they did this, but in the story, this happened. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Right, I'm not sure if I ended up saying it, saying this, because this is the second time I've had to film this video. Irish breakfast, co Irish breakfast tea? English style and it's room temperature now so we're just gonna get into it because I wrote a lot of notes as per the use so in the movie in the movie you don't hear Ah. In the Disney movie, 
you don't hear about Snow White's real parents. You only know that she now has a stepmother. How did she end up having the evil stepmother or the evil queen, which is also her stepmother? How did this end up happening? Why does the stepmother just hate her? I think they ended up talking about that in the first part of the in the first part of the movie you end up having to do a little um introduction of re introduction reading. And I don't remember anything that I ended up reading then. But in the story or the Grimm's tale from the book, you actually do get an introduction to how Snow White got her name and why she has and why she now has a stepmother. I encourage you to go ahead and read the origin story or the actual Grimm's tale of Snow White. Because it's really fascinating. Again, even if you don't like even if you don't want to go ahead and write a story, it's interesting to go ahead and see the similarities and differences between what Disney took out of the story and add it and add it to the story just to go ahead and make it Disney. You know, child friendly. The second thing I ended up pointing out was that in the movie, in the Disney movie, it seemed like the evil step, the evil queen slash stepmother didn't really trust anything that the magic mirror said that didn't agree with her. But in the story, they said that the magic mirror did not have the ability to lie. It could not tell a lie. So that's, again, that's something to go ahead and think about while you're watch, either watching or reading the story. In the Grimm story, the evil queen slash stepmother just wanted Snow White dead because of envy. She envied how beautiful Snow White was even at a young age and how the mirror said that she will never be able to live up to Snow White's to Snow White's fairness they literally say fair who's the fairest of them all or who's the fairest one of all what was the actual We're going, the actual um, line from the movie was magic mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all. But in the story here, it says mirror, mirror on the wall, who in this land is the fairest of all. Is that how she says it? Who in this land is the fairest of all? Who is the land of the fairest of all? Who in this land is the fairest of all? Right. It says here because she knew that the mirror could only tell the truth. The magic mirror could not lie in the story, but would have been able to lie in the movie. Although I don't think it lied. I think it was more of, I don't want to bring this up to you, but now I have to. So yeah. In the story, in the Grimm story, she ordered the huntsman to take Snow White into the middle of the forest, kill her. I'm already getting demonetized anyway. I'm not monetized. 
This ain't gonna be for kids anyway. And then bring back her lungs and liver as proof of her being dead. The huntsman was supposed to take Snow White into the woods, into the forest, like into the deepest, darkest part of the forest, off her and take her lungs and liver to the queen, to the evil queen. But in the movie, the evil queen just asked the huntsman to go ahead and take her into the darkest parts of the woods, kill her off, and then bring her heart in the specific box that she had. Now, I will say, in both the movie and the story, the huntsman does not, brings her into the forest, but does not kill her. Instead, he ends up taking the heart, as the Disney movie, or the liver and lungs of a pig. Well, in the story, they say boar. But like boar is like a hairy pig. Yeah, he took a pig's liver and lungs and then in the Disney movie, a pig's heart. And we were supposed to be watching this as kids. Good Lord. Right. This is completely out of order. I didn't write this in chronological order. I was only writing this as it came, to, as it um, became apparent in my head while I was watching the movie yesterday. In the movie, just to go ahead and make Snow White not the fairest in the land, or at least try to. In order to diminish Snow White's fairness, whatever that was, she put her in ragged clothing, or rags as they say it in the book. No, wait. Or rags as they said in the movie and made her work as a scullery maid. So she already knew how to cook and clean and stuff in the movie. But in the book, she was still a child when she, the huntsman was ordered to kill her. Yep. An old lady going after a child because of youth reasons. And as the movie itself starts off with Snow White doing her chores, cleaning the steps as she was in the movie, she ends up meeting the prince, which we are going to be calling Prince Charming or the Prince throughout this entire time because I think there's two different Prince Charmings, the one in Disney, the one in Cinderella, and the one in Snow White. They were both very genet generic, by the way. Like, it almost seemed like they didn't have any type of thing to separate them. I don't understand. Anyway, in the movie, yeah, she ends up meeting the prince while she's doing her chores. He scares her because she was singing to her animals and he ends up singing like it was a duet. She runs into the castle. Why am I telling you the entire movie? And basically hides from him until she hears her his voice. And then she's like, oh yeah, that's a pretty nice voice. I'll listen to it. I'll go ahead and send this dove that I just gave a freaking pack on the cheek. Send it his way. 
because logic, because Disney logic. She was the OG princess, the OG damsel in distress for Disney. She could have been done, she, the story could have been done better. Right, but in the, going back into the story, she doesn't meet the prince until after she died and came back to life. And then they fall in love instantly because story, because logic. I talked about that. I'm reading the I'm reading the notes I took by the way. Okay. So now she's already ran into the forest. She has already had to go ahead and deal with the huntsman being this close to killing her. She ends up finding a cottage. Or at least that's how it went in the Grimm story. She ends up stumbling upon the dwarf's cottage. And this cottage, you will be surprised if you've only watched the movie, was spotless. It was clean. Everything had its place. They were able to cook their own dinner, lay out their own table, lay out their own dishes on the table, and have everything in order. Everything was in order. It would be a Virgo's dream. The moment my sister sees this video, she's going to end up hating the heck and the heck, and heck out of me because I said that. Oh, I didn't do that. Okay. But in the movie, in Disney's movie, nah, she first of all ends up she runs into the darkest part of the forest, gets scared by everything because apparently she was going through some sort of fever dream run in which she was scared by everything, by trees and wind and everything, and she falls down some sort of trap or hole or something in the ground. And then finally just ends up falling out, crying. But then she also befriends animals that she startled because she fell and she was crying and then they came up to see what was happening and she just went, oh no. What? She was just confused. So she startled them. And after befriending those animals that wanted to go ahead and check on her, she asked where she would be able to sleep for the night. And the animals show her to the dwarf's cottage. When I tell you this story could not get any more fun to talk about, we're almost 20 minutes in. Yeah, I knew this wasn't going to be a 10 minute type. But when she gets to that cot, when she gets to the dwarf cottage, I'm calling it that now. D-pad? I'm calling it the D-pad now. It was so dirty. The chairs had dust. The, the the beams that were on beams that are in on the ceiling keeping the ceiling up had cobwebs. There were spiders, dirty dishes piled up on the table, and just everything was a mess. how I ended up putting it in my notes. It was dingy, dusty, and dirty. So what does she do? She cleans it. 
she decides yeah in the movie in the Disney movie Snow White specifically decides that she's gonna clean the cottage before the dwarves got back and ask them when they got back if she would be technically she was like hey if I clean up their cottage they'll have to let me stay So she cleaned. She got the animals that showed her over to the cottage to help her clean. I could be making this up. This could have just been a fever dream or something. She finishes cleaning. It's the end of the day and the dwarfs get back. They get scared because there's someone in there, there's someone in the deep pad and no one knows. And no one knows who it is. But there's a difference between that happening. And then in the story, she does end up falling asleep in the dwarf's cottage, the D-pad. And they don't wake her up until morning. Because of the fact that one, it was already clean. So when she got it, so when she got in there, she didn't have to clean it. Two, they're like, hey, they end up hearing her sob story or how she ended up where she was. And they're like, hey, We'll let you stay here, but you'll have to go ahead and do all the cleaning and the cooking and mending our stockings and everything. Basically what, what women do in these stories. That's why I had to say it the way I did because I found it, a, I found it very difficult to say that. Right, there is another difference I ended up finding. They didn't have individual identities or personalities in the Grimm story because that's not how that worked. But in the Disney movie, they did. It kind of just makes for better entertainment, I guess. Than to just try to figure out who's saying who. Uh, who's saying what? I keep on forgetting to close parentheses. So in the Disney movie, Snow White basically becomes their mother. The mother that they either A, never had, or B, just, they don't have that motherly feel, that motherly personality. They don't have mother dwarf. <laughs> that sounds bad. That sounds bad. All right. So we're getting closer to where the evil step, the evil stepmother or the evil queen wants to go ahead and try to kill Snow White. And she does. In the movie, you probably already know, the poison apple that she ended up coloring red just to make it look normal. And one bite of it will go ahead and make her go into a sleeping death. Basically, a sleep-like death. A death like sleep, whichever one is more easier to understand. <laughs> but in the story, yeah, she did the poison apple, but she did it completely differently. She did a ribbon to go ahead and tighten 
Snow White's bodice, whatever that is. I'm not a person that would know old age, fa old age fashion. But I'm thinking like a corset. I have that type of image in my mind. You know, she just tried to go ahead and suffocate, suffocate her with tightening up her ribbons. The dwarves kind of went and go in and cut the ribbon off. It loosens up her bodice and it's like, oh, I can breathe again. This lady came over and she was tightening up my bodice and the dwarves were like, yeah, that might have been the evil queen trying to kill you. You might want to go ahead and be careful. <laughs> Giving her a warning. She does not heed the warning. The evil the evil queen slash stepmother comes back in a different disguise and she has a comb. And she's like, yeah, I'll go ahead and comb out the knots in your hair. She ends up sticking them. I'm not sure whether she stuck the comb into her head or into her hair, but she like drops dead. Snow White just drops dead immediately. The dwarves come back take the comb out and tell her to be careful of who she ends up letting in the house. Don't let anyone, any stranger in the house. And then the evil, the evil queen slash stepmother comes in again in a different disguise than she did the other two times, the previous times. And she has an apple, but not any apple. She has the poison apple in which the red side that Snow White was supposed to bite into was poisonous. And the other side, there was a white side actually, was not. So when Snow White wanted to go ahead and see whether the apple was okay, or this is how the queen the evil queen slash stepmother was thinking she took a bit she took a bite out of the white part of the apple or the white half of the apple because that was safe and she was like see very safe she hands over the apple to snow white snow white bites into the red part the poisonous part the rest is history she is dead and both of them she is dead <laughs> both the movie, the Disney movie, and the Brothers Grimm story. She bites into the apple and she drops. I don't think I would have, I don't think I would have fun saying that someone just drops dead. There is a difference to how, there is another difference to how that happened. In the movie, the there is a group of birds that were trying to go ahead and keep the evil queen slash stepmother from giving Snow White the apple because they were like, "Hey, you, yo, there's some vultures over there. That that's not a good sign. You might not want to get that apple." But again, the birds can't talk; they can only tweet. So they did what they could with what they had. And now Snow White's on the ground. She has bitten the apple. The apple is bitten. She is now laying on the ground. In the movie, the animals that went to go ahead and help her clean up and just ended up staying in that area specifically, how do they not have migrational issues with animals in these stories? I will never know. They rush over to go get the seven doors so they can go ahead and take her, um, take all of them to her to go ahead and try to save her. They fail. So instead they go attack, they go try to attack the evil queen or the stepmother and they chase her all the way up to this cliff where she is now behind a boulder. 
She was on the edge of a cliff behind a boulder and what she thought was a good idea was to try to use some sort of very sturdy branch. Hold on, let me get a stick. I got a stick somewhere, I can go ahead and... Yikes. I got a stick. <laughs> Something like this, but a lot longer and probably a lot more sturdy. She went to go ahead and try to wedge the boulder from where it was, where it stood. And, I mean, it slightly works, but then lightning comes down, strikes the ground that she is actually standing on, the cliff that she's actually standing on, and that part of the cliff falls along with her, and then the boulder she was trying to go ahead and use to crush the doors. There's a lot of death in this movie. How is this okay for kids to watch? So now we're going back over to the story because I know that's not okay for kids to watch. I need to go ahead and take a sip of tea. Because this is getting very very irritating. So, in the Grimm story, as the, the dwarves did kept keep warning her, do not let any strangers in the house, in the D-pad. And she still did. Ignorance, youthful ignorance, Again, she ends up biting the apple. She's dead on the ground. They end up finding her. They go ahead and weep, weep, weep. They end up doing that in the movie too, but it's after the evil queen slash stepmother dies. They get back to her. They go ahead and sob. They cry. They weep at her, at her deathbed. <laughs> In both the mo in both the Disney movie and the Grimm's Tale, they end up building her a glass coffin because they didn't feel she was too beautiful to try to bury. So she was like, they were like, yeah, we're not going to. So in comes the prince, who has found said Snow White in the movie. Just earlier, somehow the news got out to him, and now she's and now he's here to pay his respects, or just grab the body, the dead body of his former love. <laughs> but in the story, he was like, "Hmm, she looks really pretty. I want to go ahead and take her in and keep her as my wife, even though she's dead." That makes no sense, but this is a grim story, which is not supposed to. So in the movie, the lovely scene of True Love's kiss, trying to go ahead and take the poison out of Snow White, and it works. He kissed the dead body. I'm not even sure if he knew that love, true love's kiss was going to go ahead and reverse the spell or something, or whether he just went to go ahead and give her like this last, um, uh, um, last kiss goodbye before she goes up into heaven or something. But yeah, boom, she ends up waking up, end of the movie, everything, go, everything ends all happily ever after. But in the story, it didn't go that way. He ends up ordering his servants to go ahead and carry her clear glass coffin so he can take it home with him. And one of the servants end up dropping it, which dislodges the piece of apple that she bit because she didn't completely chew it. It get 
somehow it's not in her mouth anymore. It dislodges. Did I write that? Yeah. The prince comes along and wants Snow White's dead body, but as his servants were trying to carry her coffin away, one of them dropped it and the, the piece of apple Snow White bit flew out of her mouth. She's alive now <laughs> because apparently that's how that apple worked. She didn't completely chew it. She just fell after she bit it. And then again, she's, everything's all good and dandy. Um, there's more parts actually to the st grim story. So the evil stepmother ends up learning about this new queen that's gonna be come, um, getting married soon. And, he, and she's like, cool, I wanna go to the wedding. So she asks the mirror one more time after getting ready for that wedding, who is the fairest of them all? And the mirror says Snow White. She's like, what? She ends up going to the, she ends up going to the wedding and finds out that it was Snow White that was going to be becoming queen. And then she ends up having to deal with punishment. The evil queen slash stepmother's punishment was to wear red hot iron shoes and dance until she dropped dead. And she did. End of story. Everything ends happily ever after, but not for the jealous evil queen slash stepmother. That was a lot of explanation. A lot of me having to go between the movie and the book. I advise you, seeing as though we all have time to do it, to go either read the story or probably listen it, to it on Audible. I am not sponsored, by the way. Or go watch the movie first. Either way, watching both the movie and then reading the story, it was very, very eye-opening because I don't remember watching Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. According to my sister, I at least watched it once, but again, I don't remember it. And that was a trip. And I was like, yeah, that sounds like it would be a good video idea to go ahead and talk about the differences between the movie and the story. And once again, this is going to end up becoming a 40 minute video. Well, that was 40 minutes of me trying to go ahead and talk about everything that I had on the list. And again, my suggestion to you is to either go read the story or go watch the movie. You can do both too, because that's how I ended up finding this out. Um, I think, I'm not sure on which one I'm doing next. It's either going to be Cinderella or Sleeping Beauty. But if there are any other um, stories that influence Disney movies, that you want to go ahead and put into the comments section down below, please do. I love reading these things. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to go ahead and see more. If you like this long butt video and you want to go ahead and see more of this or anything else that I want to go ahead and completely talk about, do way too much research for, and then discuss. 
or maybe you want to go ahead and know when the next time I am putting out a video, which is usually on, a t on Tuesdays, specifically around 3 o'clock. Unless I don't get it up on time, then it's usually either Tuesdays at 3 o'clock or whenever I'm able to post it, which is why you would want to have the notifications on. Um, you can follow me on other social media such as Twitter and Instagram for both. It's at Tokiga Uzuru and if you like this video, which if you are here by now, if you ended up at the end of this video here, then you probably did like the video, press the thumbs up button. Um, I will end up having a card annotation for my sister Alice's video where we have a complete conversation on like the basis, the basic knowledge of Disney princesses. And it will be right over there. Anything else? No, I think that's it. I think that's everything. We have gotten over the 40 minute mark. And this is going to be heck to try to upload. I'm not going to be editing any of it, by the way, because I feel like all of it, all of it is very important to understanding the story. Again, you could just read or watch the movie. You could either just read the story or watch the movie or do both. That is my suggestion. Doing both is my suggestion. But that is all the time that I have because I did not do this. I was only able to write notes on one movie. Maybe I'll end up doing this next next week as well if I don't have another idea by Tuesday. Yeah, by Tuesday. Um, yeah, that's all. And... I will see you guys next time. Hopefully not as stressed as I am right now. Bye.